world, the world's writers will walk through those gates. And uh, if you hang around, you get a chance to talk to them. I'm interested in conversations that deal with things that matter, that real, you know, how do we live our lives? First of all, make climate change personal in your life. The second step is get angry and get active. And the third step, and believe it or not, I think this is the most important. We have to imagine this world that we want to hurry towards. But kindness is looking at people as people and not as, I voted this, I do this, whatever it is. There are some people we'll never get along with, but most of us, most of us are a complex mass of different things. Hello, I'm Julia Donaldson. Some of you might know me from some of the books I've written, such as The Gruffalo or What the Ladybird Heard. Well, one of the things that I really love normally about coming to the Edinburgh International Book Festival is meeting children who love to read and bringing my stories to life for them on the stage. This year, of course, none of the authors or illustrators can do that. But I am delighted that this year's online book festival is available and free to so many children in so many different places. So I hope that anyone watching has a wonderful time and that it makes you want to read lots and lots of books. Hello, I'm children's author Philip Arder, and I'm delighted to be asked for what for me must be my book, probably 23rd year of doing an event for the Edinburgh International Book Festival. Now, I haven't been given a lanyard this year because I'm having to do it from home, so I'm wearing some of my other lanyards. If you don't know what a lanyard is, it's one of these uh, identification tags you wear, so if you're terribly important like an author, you get to go to different places. So I thought I'd put a few of my previous year's lanyards on um, when I talk to you about my brand new series with the illustrator Rob Biddulph, which is called Nine Lives of Furry Purry Bean Cat. But talking of Furry Purry, with this big beard and with all these lanyards, I'm getting rather hot, even though my son has shaved <coughs> most of my hair off. So I think what I'm going to do is start by making these disappear. Three, two, one. Well, there we are. Good. So they've gone, but I'm still here. And now you can see my bast tie and that is an Egyptian cat god. Ooh. So I'm going to be talking a lot about cats today because, as you may have guessed from the title, The Nine Lives of Furry Purry Pink Cat, my new series is about the nine lives of furry furry bean cat. Now, unlike lots of the characters I've created over the years, Furry Purry Bean Cat is actually based on a real cat. There she is. Can we see that close up, please? Now, this is when she was quite an old moggy because she lived to be about 18 years old. Some cats live longer, some cats have shorter lives. But she was the only living, breathing creature, not just a furry purry creature, that I allowed into my study when I was writing my books. So I'd be in my study and I might be thinking ideas up. And would I let my wife in? No, because she might interrupt my thought process. 
Would I let my son in? No, because he either hadn't been born or he might interrupt my thought process. I tried to think up all these good ideas. But would I let Furry Perry Bean Cat in? Yes, she was a woman. And she would snuggle up and have a snooze near me, sometimes on me, sometimes curled up near me, purring away. So when she died, I missed her and I still miss her. But then I thought, hmm, people talk about the nine lives of a cat. And what they really mean by that is if a cat falls over, ooh, magically it lands the right way up. Well, they get into lots of different scrapes and things, and they often seem to get out of them. So it's like saying they've got nine lives. Anyone else would have been killed then, 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 but the cats keep living. But I thought, what if Beanie had nine different kinds of lives? She could go to sleep and then wake up and find herself on a pirate ship on top of a pirate captain's hat, which is on top of a pirate captain who is in the middle of a sword fight. Hmm. So, what do we need? We need a pirate captain's hat. Now you may say to me, Philip, that doesn't look anything like a pirate captain's hat. It looks rather like... Well, I don't know what it looks like. Hello. But with the power of Velcros, I can go. <laughs> do I look ooh, a bit more like a pirate captain now? Or do they have that sort of more like that? I don't know. Well, I'm going to go like that. Um... <laughs> well, what I'd need there is a skull and crossbone to wear my hat. <laughs> so, Furry Perry Bean Cat might wake up and find she's aboard a pirate ship. But it's not that straightforward because everyone else on the ship knows her as Furry Perry being cat and doesn't know that she goes to sleep and wakes up in different lives. So they imagine she's there all the time. But every time Furry Perry being cat wakes up somewhere in a different time, in a different place, in a different part of the world, she doesn't remember who her friends are, who her enemies are, what their names are and what's going on. So although she's thrown into the middle of an adventure, in this instance, it's a pirate adventure. She may wake up next time and find herself at a Victorian railway station and find that she's a railway cat, which is exactly what happens because the second book is The Railway Cat. And it's today that I'm going to be reading an extract, and later on in this video, Rob Biddulph, who does the fantastic pictures, is going to be showing you how to draw a very, very lean cat. So that's a bit of an ex explanation about Beanie, who became the hero of Furry Furry Bean Cat, and what Furry Furry Bean Cat gets up to. What other lives does she have? Well, there's one where she is the library cat, and it turns out that library is going to be closed, and she has to help find a way to save it. And in that book, she's helped by some very unlikely friends who are spiders. In the pirate captain's cat book, she's helped by a ship's rat. And in the latest one I'm writing, well, I don't want to give too much away, but it's called The Witch's Cat. So as you can see, there are lots of different places and times that Furry Purry Bean Cat lives in. So, what do I do now? I need a copy of The Railway Cat to read to you. And although you can see on the screen what it looks like, unfortunately, the book hasn't actually been printed yet. So what am I going to do? I'm going to have to write it myself. <laughs> Okay, so now I better get reading. Well, it's suddenly got a bit dark outside, so we've got some light on in here. Now I think you can probably see the reflection behind me. Now, you probably expect me to start at the beginning of the book, but I don't want to give the game away. So what I'm going to do is just read you a bit from one of the later chapters that gives you an idea of what Furry Purry Bean Cat is like. Bean Cat quickly and expertly made herself familiar with her new surroundings. Well, they were new to her this time around. Discovering the name of her station, and she was already thinking of it as hers, was easy enough. There were signs for it everywhere. It was called Kimbledown. There were two railway tracks and two platforms with a footbridge running between them. She'd already investigated both the footbridge and the other platform, and was now back on platform one, 
where all the excitement had been, because it was sunny. Furry Perry Bean Cat settled herself underneath a hanging basket of brightly coloured flowers. Soon she had drifted off to sleep, dreaming of steam engines and whistles and rain. Oh! Furry Perry Bean Cat awoke with a shock. She had cold water on her head and she could hear laughing. She dashed to one side, then turned to look back. Water was dripping from the hanging basket, and Tom the Porter was halfway up a short ladder, watering can in hand. Oh, sorry, Purry, he laughed. You did that on purpose, thought Furry Perry, Perry Bean Cat, though her cat instincts also told her that Tom liked cats in general, and her in particular, so he was being mischievous rather than nasty. Not that this made a wet head acceptable. She arched her back and sst at Tom to show her displeasure. Sorry, Bean Cat, Tom said again as he came down the ladder with the watering can, but he was still smiling and didn't look particularly sorry. He picked up the ladder, tucked it under his arm, and walked away, whistling and sniffing. I'm, I'm sorry, I am going to ask that, excuse me. Um, hello, Filibardo. Yeah, no, I'm actually doing, um, I'm doing an Edinburgh International Book Festival. Oh, so, sorry, yeah, so it's you. Okay, it's, it's, it's uh, Rob Bidell. What well, you want me to stop nattering on them and give you time to um to do your uh, your draw along with uh, yep 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 okay thank yep thank thanks very much Rob right bye well yes so that was Rob Bidulph who does the pictures and he says it's time now for you to do the draw along I'll get my piece of paper I think I've got a piece here under my typewriter there we are so I've got my piece of paper got my pencil, I might even use a pen. So let's now listen to Rob, draw along with him, and then at the end uh, we'll, we'll have a look at the pictures. Okay, so sorry about the interruption. Okay, Rob, over to you. The first thing we're going to draw is, we are going to draw a big sort of smiley mouth shape in the middle of our piece of paper. I'm having to come all the way around the side because I'm left-handed and I don't want to turn my piece of paper, but we're going to draw a great big smile right across our page like that really big smiley mouth curvy shape okay so a nice easy start but shall i tell you a secret we are not drawing a big smiley mouth that's not what this is you'll see which part of furry furry bean cat it is in a moment the next thing i want you to do we're going to put our pen at this end and we're going to draw a series of zigzags going up Okay, so we are going to go, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in, one, we're going to come back out again, two, in, out, in, out, sounds like I'm doing the hokey cokey, doesn't it, in, out, in, like that, so one, two, three, four, five points, like that, okay, so a little fun zigzag, do, 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 do. up to there, okay, from the end of our zigzag, we are then going to draw a dead straight line going up diagonally towards the top of our page, like that. Okay, pretty easy. Then we're going to come down again. So we're drawing a sort of mountain shape. We're going to come down, not back to where we started, but about sort of just over halfway back down, like that. Okay, then from there, we are going to go across our page about five centimeters I'd say something like that I'm just gonna make that nice and sharp with my bloody pen there we go then from the end of our horizontal line we're gonna go up again in a nice diagonal straight line to about there roughly the same height as there mine's slightly lower but that's fine then guess what we're gonna come down again dead straight line to about there we're gonna go slightly lower than the point where we started this particular mountain shape. Then we're going to go out in a straight horizontal line, just about a centimetre or so. And then guess what? We're going to do more of these zigzags coming in. So we need, how many points was it? One, two, three, four, five. We need to do five here as well. So we're going to go in, out, in, out, in, out, in. And then the last one, out, Again, we'll have to extend my little curve up just to meet that. But there we go. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So there we go. 
And look, can you see? We have the silhouette of a cat's head, don't we? We have these sort of furry cheeks and we have two big ears. So fur furry Perry bean cat is really starting to take shape. Okay, while we're here, let's draw the insides of her ears, shall we? Now I want you to imagine that the top of her head here just carries on, but we're gonna leave a little gap there and then we're gonna continue the line on, just to about there. And then we're gonna follow the shape of the triangle ear inside it. You can see I'm making the line slightly thinner than the outside one by using my brush pen tip. Let's do the same here. So it's going to go along, we're going to go up, and then we're going to follow that diagonal line down. And that's going to be like the inside of our cat's ears, the lining of the ears. Is that what it's called? That's what I call it, the lining, a sort of the silky lining inside the ears. My dog Ringo's got that lovely silky lining inside his ears. In fact, Ringo believe it or not, is right behind me right now, fast asleep. He's just been out for a long walk, so he's very sleepy. So I don't think he's gonna interrupt us unless he does a big loud snore, who knows. <laughs> right then, so there we go. There's our cat's head and the inside of our cat's ears. Let's draw some eyes on our cat. So at this end, slightly towards the top half of our cat's face, I want you to draw a nice big circle like that got lovely big eyes, has the bean cat. Okay, I'm just gonna make it a little bit thicker. And when I do that, did you see, I don't know if you noticed, the bottom of my circle was a little bit pointy. So but just by going around it again, like this, because I want it to be a little bit thicker anyway, I can then just sort of help smooth off the circle a bit as well. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do, I, I'm not gonna go straight in and draw the other eye, I'm gonna draw um, bean cat's nose first because I need to make sure that I leave enough space between the two eyes to fit in the nose and the mouth bit and if I just worry that if I just drew the eye in like that I might not leave enough space so I think the best thing to do is draw the nose before we draw the other eye and then we know that we definitely will have left enough space so about sort of three quarters of the way up your circle in terms of height I just want you to draw a straight line across a couple of centimeters long like that and we're gonna then turn it into an upside down triangle, like that, okay? And that is gonna be Bean Cat's nose. And then once we've done that, and we know that we've got enough space, we can then draw the other eye in, over this side of her head, like that. Try and get it as close as you can, in terms of size to the other eye. There we go, lovely. Oh, she's really starting to take shape now. Shall we, shall we give her some pupils? Let's just draw a little pupil right in the middle of that eye. Draw a little circle that we're gonna color in. And let's do the same here. A little circle. And we color in. Perfect. Now, just around that circle, I'm gonna use the very tip of my pen. I'm gonna draw a very thin lined circle, which is gonna be her iris. And then a bit later on, we're gonna color that in nice and bright green. She's got lovely bright green eyes, you see. There we go, perfect. Right, let's give her a mouth, shall we? So from the middle of her nose, so sort of the tip, the inverted tip triangle bitty of her nose, we're just gonna draw a little straight line coming down, not too long, about that long. So it looks a bit like a sort of cocktail glass or something, doesn't it? And then let's give her a nice smiley mouth. Now I like to do the mouth slightly lopsided. I'm gonna do it coming up slightly higher on that side. Just makes her look a little bit more characterful, I think. There we go. Lovely smiley face. Now, in terms of what breed Furry Perry Bean Cat is, I know she is based on a real cat. I think that, that Big Phil had when he was younger. And I think she was a tortoiseshell cat, so she's got all sorts of little markings and things on her. Um, most of which we will do when we colour in, but I just, this little bit I'm going to draw in with my pen. She's got like a white strip that goes from her nose down to her chin. So I'm just going to draw that uh, in with my pen, but I'm not just going to do it in a straight line. I'm just going to, because she is furry, purry, this bean cat, I'm just going to do it in a little series of sort of zigzags. So it's a bit like, I don't know, the shape of a Christmas tree or something. And this just makes it look a little bit, look, makes her whole face look a little bit kind of 
this area I'm just going to do it on both sides like that so we're sort of describing where this stripe is but we're also adding a bit of furriness to our drawing like that okay now we need to add a couple more bits in here we need to give her a couple of eyebrows I'm going to use my slightly thicker brush pen for this but you can just use the same pen now her eyebrows are a long way above her eyes in fact they're sort of like floating out of the top of her head she's so happy and they sort of come across her ears like that so there we go two nice eyebrows and then she has these little whiskery bits just one two three just coming out from sort of near the base of her ears one two three like that often it's these little details that really help add a bit of character to your cat so it's a nice thing to do okay we need to give our cat a little body now don't we so this is how we're going to do that from here so just from just left of where the stripe hits our cat's chin we are going to draw a line that comes down it's going to come out like that i'm going to sort of curve around and head down towards the bottom of our page like that and that's going to be our cat's bottom i think we're going to do our cat sort of sitting down like that so this is the sort of outline of her back and her bottom and then from there i want you to draw a horizontal line going straight across our page let's work out i'll probably draw about there so maybe level level with that side of our little stripey thing on her face then from that point we're going to come up and we're going to curve around go along just a little bit just to draw her back foot and then to draw sort of the the rest of her back leg we're going to draw another nice curve like that that's going to be her sort of back leg as she sat down so you'll notice as I go I sort of Sometimes I just sort of realise mm, I don't quite want the shape to be like that. So I sort of go back in and slightly adjust things a little bit, which is perfectly valid thing to do. So you can do that as well as you, as you keep going. You might notice that, oh, that bit's not quite as neat as I wanted it. So you can just go back and make it a nice sharp point or whatever you want to do. There are no, there are no rules. You can just keep on drawing till you get it right. OK, let's draw one of her front legs, shall we? So just coming out from halfway up that back foot let's draw another little horizontal line then let's go up curve around again for a front foot and then draw a vertical line that goes about up to the same height as that and then let's just draw another one next to it and that can be her front right leg why don't we give her a front left leg too that would be handy wouldn't it when it comes to walking so halfway up that foot we're going to draw a little horizontal line then we're going to come around again make another foot shape yet another foot shape like that and then this time our straight line is going to go up but we're just going to keep on going keep on going right up to join up with the body and can you see what we've done left leg right leg back leg which looks quite complicated i think when you look at it like this but once you've broken it all up it's quite it's very easy to do <coughs> excuse me Okay, we need to give her her final leg. They have four legs, don't they, cat? So cats. So uh, we need to just sort of follow that sort of curve there. Come down like that, and then draw her final foot next to that. So they're all sort of in a row as she sat down. Lovely, perfect. We're nearly done now. Now, this white stripe that goes down from her nose to her chin, do you know what? It carries on down onto her chest and it sort of comes down in a U shape like that. So I want you just to come down. It's not, it's coming, it's moved slightly back because her chin is sticking out a bit, but it's going to come down. I'm still doing it in these sort of zigzaggy shapes, but then I'm going to turn into a little kind of curve, go all the way around, and then I'm just going to start going back up the other side. Join back up there and you can see it sort of carried on onto her chest like that now what do we need to draw out the back here what do cats have at the back that's right a tail and bean cat's tail is her proudest 
possession, if you can call a tail a possession, I don't know. She's very proud of her tail, that's what I mean to say, and it's a lovely, big, thick, curly, furry tail. So, from, the, from about half a centimetre up from the bottom, what I want you to draw is, I want you to start coming around in a big sort of nice swooshy curve shape. If every now and then you can add a few little zigzags to make it feel nice and curvy. But we're going to come up and around, and then we're going to sort of head back down here, and we're going to stop about there. But Rob, I thought you said she had a lovely big bushy thick furry tail. This one just looks very thin and sort of weedy. That's because that's just one of the lines, one of the outlines of our tail. We're going to draw the other one now. We're going to draw, we're going to sort of follow that shape, but we're going to make it a lovely thick tail. It's going to come around here, go up, and you know what? We're going to go right up, almost to her chin. I'm just adding a few little zigzags here and there to make it lovely and furry. Do you see it almost touches her chin? And we're going to come right the way around here, like that. See, I told you it was a big, thick, furry tail. And then we're going to keep on zigzagging around and then eventually we're going to join up again there so look at that lovely thick bushy tail oh, i like this it's good now we need to add some claws the way we do the claws is very easy three little tiny lines on each foot and there we go we've pretty much finished the outline of the furry purry bean cat oh i forgot i know what i've forgotten something very important up in this area here can anyone see what i've forgotten to do that's right little whiskers we're going to add three little dots on each side one two three one two three that's better that finishes it off nicely doesn't it <coughs> okay i think we're at the point now where we can colour in our bean cat. Now, as I said, she's kind of in the books. She's a kind of tortoise shell cat, which means she's, a, she's a basically a brownie colour. Um, she has got a white tip of her tail. She's got white feet. All four of her feet are white, but this leg, the left leg, she's got like a white sock, okay? And um, she has lots of little stripes here and there around her, which you can add in. But do you know what? You can draw any cat you like. I mean, maybe you've got a cat at home. Maybe you've got a ginger cat. Um, you could colour your cat in lovely bright orange colour. Maybe you've got a black cat, you could colour yours in black or a white cat. Whatever colour cat you want. Do you know what? You can do a rainbow coloured cat. You can do a bright pink pat cat with yellow spots if you want. It's totally up to you. I'm going to colour mine in, bean cat colours. But as I said, whatever you like. It might be nice if you've got a cat, if you coloured your cat in the same colour as yours. That would be cool. And then maybe when you send me a picture of your drawing, you could send a picture of your cat as well. That would be really cool. But I'm going to now colour in my cat. I'm going to go into super speed mode as per usual. So I will see you back here in 30 seconds or a minute, something like that. Okay, you ready? Here I go. Three, two, one, go. There we are. I think all that's left is for me to say many thanks to everyone for, oh, sorry, I, I forgot I was wearing theirs. I was so dazzled by the brilliance of my um, picture of the fairy peri bean cat, I slipped on some sunglasses, some cool shades. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, hearing all about fairy peri bean cat and drawing along, drawing your own fairy peri bean cat, or maybe you'll change it a bit and make it into a cat of your own. Uh, many thanks to Rob Bidolf. Uh, what lovely hands that man has. If you're wondering what his face looks like, Looks like that. Not quite as uh, furry or furry as um, some of the faces I know. 
Uh, many thanks, of course, to the Ember International Book Festival for inviting students today. Uh, many thanks for Simon Schutz, of course, for commissioning us around the books. And to Dottie Hendricks, who's been on Wobble Vision. I mean, Dottie has really been doing there. You will be down here today. But that's very much appreciated, especially as you're having to keep away from me. So um, do be on the lookout for the books. Do be sure to listen to some of the other um, story times from the Edinburgh International Book Festival being recorded, especially for you, and take care of yourself. So, well, that's about it, really. I think I've earned myself quite a big snack. Don't you? Bye-bye. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>